David R. here. Today I'm going to talk to you about this book, Behind Bars, Surviving Prison, by Jeffrey Ian Ross and Stephen C. Richards. I want you to imagine for a moment, you're sleeping, everything is quiet, peaceful, and all of a sudden, BAM! Your front door is bashed in. You open your eyes. You're blinded by flashlights and guns stuck in your face. You're told to stay where you are, freeze, or whatever else they say. Your wife is hysterical. Your kids are hysterical. They shoot your dog, no matter what size the dog is. They always kill the dog. Dog is dead. Everything is going crazy. There's so much confusion. Even amidst the confusion, you're able to obey their orders. They rough you up a little bit, but at least you're not killed. You're taken to jail. You find out that you broke some obscure law that you didn't even know about. Perhaps some bureaucrat needed to justify their existence and they just kind of drew your name out of the hat. Now you're in jail. What did you do? Well, maybe you caught a short lobster or you said something about somebody on the internet and they took offense to it. Something, anything, it could be, in this country especially. So you've never been to jail before, but you're facing prison time. And that's where a book like this comes in. And uh, sure, street knowledge helps. Talking with other prisoners helps. Maybe even watching some videos helps. But this book will teach you about how to find a lawyer, for, for instance. Uh, how to post bail or bond. It teaches you the three federal levels of security in prison, like minimum, medium, maximum. You want to be in a minimum security prison because minimum is for white collar criminals. Medium is for like uh, younger guys. They call them gladiator schools. And maximum is for you know, special types of inmates, <laughs> like the Unabomber, or spies, terrorists, those types. They uh, also teach the types of people who are in prison, and these are like snitches, informants, biker gangs, street gangs, prison gangs, murderers, rapists, you name it, they're in prison. They also teach about prison staff, and primarily correctional officers, but correctional officers really don't correct anything. In fact, a lot of them are involved in crime themselves, like smuggling in contraband, drugs, whatever else, and maybe even committing violent acts or covering up for violent acts. They do it all too. And you'll also need to know that prison isn't some utopia of multicultural groups intermingling. Nope doesn't work that way in the real world. Blacks stick with blacks, Hispanics with Hispanics, whites with whites. Race is the dividing line. The authors also talk about the uh, convict code, do's and don'ts, like you want to be polite, you, you want to uh, not joke with people or be sarcastic, you want to mind your own business, you don't want to wear your heart on your sleeve. You don't want to be crying about stuff. The predators will see that and view that as a weakness. You don't want to be a snitch. I think the only person worse than a snitch is a child rapist or child killer. They are worse than a snitch, but a snitch is right up there with them. You don't want to be an informer because once you shake hands with the devil, the correctional officer, that is, you're doomed. You um, also want to avoid gambling because if you can't pay up with cash, you're going to have to pay up some way. That will be either with your life or with sex. And that leads me to sex in the slammer. The number one fear of most people going into prison is being raped. Let's say if you are raped, the authors say that you want to enact revenge and it has to be fierce and it has to be at the right time. And once you do that, then uh, you might get some respect, I would think. But usually once somebody's turned out or punked out, eh, they're, uh, they're usually branded as a uh, 
you know, prostitute or something like that. Another thing is the authors talk about prison food, illnesses, prison work. Prison work is like slave labor. The lowest on the totem pole of pay is like 12 cents. Highest is $1.10, depending on what you do. Still, it's all slave labor. And there's a chapter on the day in the life of Joe Convict. From the moment he wakes up at 6 a.m. and goes to bed at 10 p.m., his whole life is structured for him. He doesn't think for himself. He just goes with the flow. And the last part of this book is on being free. And it can be euphoric at first, and it usually is. But then it can be disorienting because of new technologies, the way people act. Let's say if you were put in prison in the 80s and you are released today, those are like two different worlds, to be honest. It would take some adjustment if you didn't know how society was today, if you were just kind of living in those times. You know, things have changed dramatically since then. So anyway, I highly recommend this book for just about anybody. And there's a couple other books I recommend along with this. This one here will probably keep you out of jail and keep you out of prison. And then there's this one. Just uh, stay out of prison. <laughs> that's the best thing, right? But sometimes it can't be avoided. Well, anyway, that's all I got. Talk to you later. Bye.